Be sure and tell them Lord Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Welcome to the Large Marge Sent Us Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweeties <laughs> are so gone. Sweetie's having a laugh riot right now and she's dying. So I'm trying to get through this. She had to pass off the intro to me because she's dying. Anyways, uh, Just this is one of them days yep. <laughs> where Sweetie can't do anything without laughing. Just one of them days. Anyway, don't take it personal. Um, yeah, so this is your favorite podcast where two sweet sisters talk about their favorite flicks from childhood. I'm sure you know that. You're here. You're with us. You're in the present. You're now. Um, wait, wait. I'm sweetie. Yes, sweetie. Oh, she's sweetie. And I'm sweetie. And today we're kind of continuing on this strange pseudo theme we have going where sweetie and I go to see an Oscar contender and then watch an 80s or 90s movie that relates to it in some way mm. so it's last game. time we did i tanya and then we watched the cutting edge or we actually watched cutting edge first and then we saw you're I right tanya. okay we're gonna yeah Oops. we're gonna iron the details out here yeah. um this time however we saw the shape of water and tonight we watched splash 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 i was taking a bath with my mermaid tail and salt splash noise ready Go. What's <laughs> that's more. That's that always like a gun, like a gun, potentially a water balloon. Interesting, <laughs> interesting game. <laughs> that's a fun game. Yeah. Just be like, you like pick a card, and it's like a sound effect. <laughs> it's like bomb. <laughs> that one you, there's like one I think sound effect we did on here, and it was like I just did could not like get it right, like what it was. No, I have no. I was like. Pew! It was Guns? like some, it was some gun related thing, but some, anyway, we'll have to go back. That's a good game. Yep. I'd call it yep. onomatopoeia. Oh, <laughs> no one be able to say that. Uh, we should patent that. Favorite though. name. Yeah, we'll do game. it. We'll make a game. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. So. Splash. Mer- splish, splash. Mermaids. Splashy splash. Yeah. Mermaids, guys. You guys. There has been a total resurgence of mermaids in the last couple years. went away, though. Right. I think they were dormant, like, for a couple years, right? Let's say, like, mm. huge boost from The Little Mermaid. And then maybe, like, dormant, dormant. Like, you know, Princess Jab and Spasm took over. Like, other things. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, a couple years ago, mermaids everywhere. Yeah. They had mermaids, mermaid blankets. They have actual mermaid tails you can buy to, like, swim in, which we never had as a kid. And we had to, like, just tie yeah. our legs together like mermaids. Yeah. Well, uh, I, didn't, I mean, I just held them together. I didn't yeah. tie them. That'd be uh, Mermaid creepy. emoji. That just came out, and I love it. I use it all the time. Mermaid hair. Mermaid hair. I think, mermaid hair? I mean, just like really long, long pretty, flowy hair. But like, I think that this happened, I mean, I don't I don't know. I always liked mermaids. I remember looking at a National Geographic magazine where there was like a, remember this? There was like a theme park that paid women to pretend to be mermaids and they'd have like a hose in the tank. They'd like sit in the hmm. tank and then like. Kind of va- vaguely remember I thought this. it was the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, I'll have to look well, that up. Well, what little kid... And especially a little girl, but I'm not putting a gender on it because, you know, there can be mermen. And I think little boys love mermaids, too. Um, what little kid doesn't fucking love mermaids? They're so cool. I mean, the coolest. They just look so cool. And, like, sometimes the half half human, half animal, like, thing can be a little weird. And it's, like, cool, but you're, like, eh, I'm, like, not that into it. But mermaids are beautiful. Yeah. And that's why everybody likes them. True. And they're pretty. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. said that. Beautiful. Same and basically, they look, they look like Barbie dolls. Yeah. But <laughs> so this is in 1984. This movie came out directed by Ron Ho- Howard. Uh, Opie. <laughs> oh, hey, hello, Opie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ron Howard uh, starring. So this is one of the comedy runs of Tom Hanks. So mm-hmm. one of his 80s comedies. And we've done a couple now. Um, amazing. Starring also the beautiful 
Daryl Hannah. Daryl Hannah. And then randomly, and my favorite character, John Candy, as the brother. Your favorite character in the movie was the brother? Oh, totally. Wow. He had a total character arc that I loved. Really? It wasn't Eugene Levy's character arc? Also, great character. <laughs> Eugene Levy as good bad guy slash good guy. I mean, that's a good yeah. character to have. Because, like, you hate him, you hate him, hate him. Oh, he's good, he's good, he's yeah, good. Turn around. Yeah, I agree. I um, agree. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, those right? are the, ba- the basics. Yeah. Set on Cape, the, the mermaid lives on Cape Cod. We don't know why. Um, I've never seen a mermaid. Yeah. But whatever. We're locals, and we've little, never seen a mermaid. I mean, we'll talk about this, but it's like a little too tropical to be Cape Like, a mermaid would never come to yeah. Cape Cod. Uh, Ron Howard obviously has never been to Cape Cod because. That would not be what A, underwater looks like, B, what the beaches look like. Yeah. So, eh, Oops. wrong. Oops. Um, but overall, I mean, memories of this movie when I was little, obviously, I mean, I, I don't think I saw it as much as I saw some of Tom Hanks' other ones. Yeah. Primarily. I feel like I've only seen it a couple times. I think like the one I've seen the most is Joe versus the Volcano yeah. for some reason. Um, but I, remember, I, I mean, I've seen this and I remember the lobster scene. How many scene. times do you think? Like Five. Sure. Yeah. Same. I think. I don't. I know they played on the Disney Channel. I feel like we saw it like a lot then. Disney Channel. It's not yeah. too old. It's like it's a Disney movie. It is. Yeah. She's got like boobs out all the time. Yeah. Well, it was the first. And you see her under butt. some like of one one of like the Disney movie houses. It's not called Disney, but it's like one of whatever they own. Dang. Buena Vista or something. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Same. But yeah. I remember I the lobster. I remember the lobster scene and the scene at the end where he sprays her with the hose. It's very traumatic. Um, and then when she talks and that's, that's what I remembered. Um, I didn't remember the details. Yeah. There's just, that's all. Yeah. I I remember heat scenes. I remember like the basic plot. I remember the sort of traumatic scenes, which is what always happens when you're a kid. Cause it's like, that's what sticks with you. Um, and we'll go into those mm-hmm. in detail as we always do. Um, but like basically I just wanted to be like beautiful Daryl Hannah with that crimpy blonde hair. Mm. My God, I'm obsessed. I want to grow my hair out long again. I love it. But I mean, she crimped her bangs though. Not really (laughs) into the crimpy bangs. Well, I know. But if you're underwater all the time and within the salt and then you come out, well, it's just, think it's just natural. That's naturally how it's going to to dry. Natural sea salt salt spray. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Yes. Because when she's in the water, (laughs) it's, you know, like when everyone's in the water, their hair always, everyone's hair is straight. I know. I love it. I miss it. I need to grow my hair out. Um, but yeah, hold on, just one moment. Okay, I forgot Alan's last name, so oh. I just wanted to get with it. Um, which means that it's time for the. It's time for the sweet synopsis. Yes, it is. Mermaids. <laughs> mermaids. I can't do the mermaid noise. I just tried. It failed. I failed. Can you do it? <laughs> Here's it's like a dolphin squeak. Yeah, it is. But it's hard. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, <laughs> 20. There's a hair on my dog. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Um, Crazy Joe Duvall. Yeah. <laughs> Seinfeld. That's the best <laughs> reference I've ever made. <laughs> Excuse me. I made that reference. There's a hair on it my lip. It happened to me. What are you talking about? And I called out the Seinfeld episode. No, I said there's a hair on my tongue. I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting crazy again. You're getting crazy. Anyways, okay. <clears throat> 20 years ago, Alan Bauer fell off slash jumped into the ocean on Cape Cod. I, it's debatable. It's debatable. Just so everyone not from Cape Cod knows, when you're talking about Cape Cod and you're like, you're in the area you're you say i'm on cape cod you don't say i'm in cape cod because that's weird right and is it that because it's an island like it's a it's a confusing thing that people never seem to pick up people never understand it right anyways um so they're on cape cod they're on a boat alan is like staring dreamily into the, the water and then just jumps in and there's a little girl with crimpy blonde wait, hair. Wait, wait, sorry. I'm just thinking about that again. I think I, underst- I understand why now. Because he saw her. No. Um, why you say on Cape Cod versus oh. <laughs> Okay. So if you're like, I'm, you wouldn't be like, I'm on Boston. Because Boston is like a place. Like that's a city on a map. Cape Cod is not, is a general area. So you could be, if you say I'm you would be in Cape Cod. You could be anywhere. I see you're going with that, but you don't say I'm on New England. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Okay. See, it's just it's maybe just a, it's a peninsula. It's thing. just one of those. <laughs> it's 
it's just one of those things where, uh, like, if you're not from here, you would you you say it a different way, and, uh, and people that live here, local. Right, I mean, it's think a great tell. Weird. Right. Sorry. Anyways, that's anyway. what you mean. <laughs> so Alan sees this little girl, and then he gets rescued. Cut to twenty years later, Alan now owns a lucrative produce company. Woohoo! Best business um, ever. Strange. Just like yeah, in New York, they got the docks. They get the fruit. People get it. It seems like okay. If you're writing this screenplay, Brian Grazer, who is one of the screenplay writers, you'd be like, mm, okay, uh, what should Alan's profession be? Okay, spitballing here. Um, um, this, that, uh, fruit seller. Like, yeah, why would you pick like, fruit seller? I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to think of logical like, how does reasons. How it relates at all to anything that goes they're on like in the plot? Near a dock? I don't know. But. Oh, but what happens with the dock? Like Nothing. Anything? Yeah. No, I think it's a different dock they go to at the end. I don't know. Maybe that just was like, just like an easy place they could shoot and they're like, oh, let's do probably. work scenes there. I You're probably know. right. Anyway, so he's got this biz. Um, <laughs> he breaks, his girlfriend breaks up with him because she, he won't say Victoria. I love you back. Victoria, which is like, you know, common issue amongst relationships. Yeah. And you learn, so this is when you learn that uh, Alan's got some like commitment He's issues. got commitment phobia phobia i love you phobia um, yeah i don't know how long i mean how long was he with victoria i don't know but whatever she left he's upset he's like i need some time for myself and he like leaves and decides to go to cape cod because it calms him and makes him think of happy things or something presumably <laughs> aka the time he saw a mermaid in the water maybe when he was little i think is what he's referring to um but he kind of believes it's not. That didn't really happen. But there's just this feeling that he gets when he's like thinks of the water, even though he's afraid of the water and can't swim. So he goes to Cape Cod and um, goes asked to go to the island, quote unquote. Again, not sure what that is. Yeah, um, again, I just it's not so Hawaii. Like, and then people like don't do the research. Going to the big island. Like, like what? what are you talking about? It's like yeah, it's so weird and. What whatever that whole scene didn't make any sense where he like finds his way on the beach of Cape Cod and then is like, how do I like I need to get to the island. So like where on Cape Cod would you like go to a beach and then find someone to like run you over to the island on like a little motorboat? Like, I mean, I guess like it all fits into the plot, but then like don't set it in a real place. Yeah. I don't know. It's like make bizarre. up a fake island. I don't get it. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, so he gets a ride on this little dinghy. Uh, I'm running by like Fat Jack is the guy's name, <laughs> Jack, and um, a great the scene. boat breaks down. So he just like goes and swims to go get the other boat, even though he's fat and fat it's Jack. like three miles away. Um, I don't see How that. A swimmer, that fat I don't Jack. see and that ending well. I mean, they never show him again, so I think that that <laughs> the, the, it's dire. It's a dire outcome. Like I just, I just think it's clearly bad. he was very used to that. He's a good swimmer. Well, get your boat fixed, Fat Jack, because. Later, Alan's like, well, let me see if I can start this boat, but doesn't expect it to actually start. It does. Sends him flying into the ocean. He sinks down to the bottom to okay. die his lonely, cold death. Time out. So I brought this up when we were watching this. If it was me and I could not, not swim, okay, first of all, for everybody out there, fucking learn how to swim, okay? If, there, if, if you can prevent yourself from dying one way, like literally just let's let's take that off the table. If you fall into water, you will not die if you can if you know how to swim. Provided well, where you are, how what uh, the temperature is, whatever. But what if your de first defense against dying is to be able to know how to swim. It's not that hard. So teach your kids how to swim. If you're in an urban environment, take them to the swimming pool and get them swimming lessons. Everybody should know how to swim. It's Second true. of all, if you did not know how to swim, what crazy person would jump into a boat without a life jacket? You know, just, Never mind a tiny little dinghy that's right. like like sinking already. I mean, he wasn't in the right his mind, right mind. I get it, but hmm. no. Yeah, it was just a recipe for disaster. Um, so yeah, he falls off, he sinks. But who should save him? Fat Jack. Nope. The mermaid that he saw when he was little, but now she's older, like like he is, and more beautiful, and has boobs. Um, so she saves him, and then he wakes up on the beach and sees this beautiful naked blonde woman. Desmond, quit fucking around. Um, beautiful blonde naked woman in the rose bushes. Um, again, I don't, I don't think we have those on Cape Cod. But yeah, um, coral reefs either. <laughs> not like naturally anyways. Um, right. No coral or reefs. white sand beaches. No white sand beaches and teal turquoise teal water. walker. Um, so the woman's like, oh, I'm scared. Ah, and then he comes toward her. She's not saying anything. She runs into the ocean naked and swims away. And he's like, huh, I 
okay. That was sad. But she has legs. I mean, she's yeah. she's she looks like a, a beautiful woman with legs. Right. She goes back in the ocean. Goes back to find Alan's wallet that dropped out of his pocket. Finds out where he lives and is excited. However, at this moment, or in the meantime, there is a scientist. Ocean? Maybe he's an oceanographer. I don't know. What? Just a scientist. Bla- blanket term. Uh, Eugene Levy. Marine biologist. What's his name? Um, Coxcomb. No, Coxcomb. it's like. <laughs> it's something funny. Flugenduger. Yeah. It's a um, funny. he is down there studying something, and then sees her and freaks out and tries to get a picture, but she swims away too quickly. But he knows he's seen a mermaid, so he's very excited. So he makes it his life goal to like find the mermaid again, even though. Oh, no, he, he hasn't done that yet. Sorry, forget it, forget it. Anyways, <laughs> so Mermaid Lady goes off to a sunken ship, which you can't have a mermaid movie without a sunken ship, yeah. right? I feel like it's yeah. just a part, or any underwater movie, there's going to be like a ship involved, a pirate ship. Um, so she goes in there, and you know what she's got in there, sweetie? She's got a set of old but very but still relevant maps. Whoa, from pirate days. <laughs> I, guess. I forgot that. I forgot. I that guess part. they're okay. still relevant. Yeah. Um, well, it's like the map of the shoreline. That's true. So she figures out somehow. But would it be called? It wouldn't be called New York. Well, I guess it'd be called on the, New Amsterdam. <laughs> how would she know that's where it was? Like I don't know. Okay, whatever. So She's she magic. somehow figures out that that's New York and that's where it is. So she swims off to New York, um, emerges out by the Statue of Liberty naked, walks to where all the people are, and is just like, oh, so this is, I mean, right away, you would like know something was off if you were a mermaid, and you cut out of the water, and you're like, now I'm going to go over here. You'd be like, huh, all those other people are wearing things on their body, and I'm not? Like, she didn't seem to think anything was out of the way. I don't know. She just seemed smarter than that. Um, More observant, if you will. Uh, so the police take her downtown, and all she has is Alan's wallet. So they call him, and they're like, uh, this naked blonde lady is at the police station. She has your wallet. And he knows exactly who it is, because what other naked blonde lady would... Does he know? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't know any others. Exactly. So he's like, oh, sweet, and like hightails it out of there to go down and pick her up. Picks her up. They kiss immediately. She's obsessed with him. She's like, rabbit, like... Um, just like eating his body alive, it seems like she can't get enough of him. Yeah, it's which I'm like, hello. What happened to this mega shy lady in the rose bush? You know? Yeah. Overall, that's the scene makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm like, do you know who is this person? You don't know them, you right? Don't know where they he came has from? no idea. He doesn't even realize that that's the same little mermaid that saved him 20 years ago. Yeah. He just thinks it's a woman that saved him recently and happened to be naked and beautiful. And like for the record, I would have some trouble like. Hooking up with someone who couldn't speak. I mean, you don't know anything about them. You don't know what their situation is. You don't know if they're running away from, I don't know, like being a sex slave to somebody. I mean, who knows? Right. And clearly, like, it's supposed to be, like, very romantic. And he's coming off of a bro- a breakup. So and this well, and that. And but- I think they keep hinting at the fact that there's something... Um, like magnetic between yeah. them because he must have felt something when she saved him and when he saw her again yeah. that like pulled him to her so true, he just true. knew that when he saw her. I mean I'm sure that's what they were getting at but yes it is very weird because they have sex immediately and they've already like they get out of the cab and his arms around her waist like very I mean you're not pulling that move until you're like married 20 years right <laughs> it seemed like a really old person move. yeah um but they just move so fast. And they go so to his apartment. They have sex a bunch. And then he goes back to work. He's in a positive mood, as you, you are when you yeah. have sex. Um, it's He's he's living the high life. He's, he's loving it. He's life. loving it. He's, he's an into, into it. It's the guy who doesn't fall in love is slowly falling in love. Even though, again, she doesn't talk. So doesn't talk. pretty easy to fall in love with someone when they can't communicate to you because, you know, can't annoy you with, you know, what they say and that they're actually a person mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i'm a little it's a little strange for me i gotta say yeah um so while alan is at work one day uh it's little mermaid same day, same same day. day. little mermaid no name yet um decides to go uh is watching the tv and she she is a fast learner let me tell you she watches the tv and she sees this commercial <laughs> that basically just goes and klein bloomingdale's and klein bloomingdale's and so, Clyde at Bloomingdale's. <laughs> so she's able to memorize those two uh, two words. 
goes downstairs. He is a doorman. You know, honey, where do you want to go? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, awesome thing, though, is that she doesn't have anything to wear. So she puts on one of his suits and looks basically like a Diane Keaton. Diane, beautiful, <laughs> like Barbie doll Diane Keaton version. Um, so, so cool. So anyway, she gets to Bloomingdale's, finds a way up to the ladies sportswear department. And get suited with a new wardrobe. Wait, sportswear? That's like what you call just regular clothes and fashion. What? Since when? It's weird. It's a misnomer. That's weird. Yeah. That's really weird. Casual clothes. <laughs> Intimates. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So they help her out. They set her up with basically what I will refer to as later, and I'll go into detail, a Barbie doll wardrobe. <sighs> yes. Let's just say Good it's call. pretty awesome. It looks like Barbie doll clothes. Good call. Uh, and then she spends the whole day there watching TVs in the you know TV area. And learns English within six hours by just watching TV all day. She's amazing. Which is pretty cool. And they do say that the best way to learn a foreign language is to learn, watch, just watch TV a lot. That's true. So she did it. The Police Academy movies. Yeah. That's yeah, how exactly. Cassandra learned yep, yep, from yep. Wayne's World. So she, I mean, she's really smart. Obviously, she's very like accelerated like brain or something. She's got mermaid brain. I don't know. Mermaid yeah, magic. Know, just like, she's just real smart. For the, I mean, throughout this podcast, we'll refer to mermaid magic, um, similar to mambo magic, but not as much magic in the mambo department but tons, tons of, of magic mermaid. in the mermaid department and then i'm squared uh, um but she's got a lot of like cool little tricks so yeah. we'll talk about them but just think of it as like a little satchel yeah. you know mermaid magic bag yeah. boop um, yeah so alan uh bloomingdale's is closing and they're like bitch get out of here gotta go home closing time this room won't be open till you're... Closing time. <laughs> no more TV watching for your mermaid brains and your tail. Closing time. I hate that song. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so Alan comes and picks her up and, ooh, wow, she can speak now. <gasps> Whole new world. <laughs> Different Disney movie. Um, and now they can have a real chance at this relationship because there's actually <laughs> communication on both sides tell me i got a chance and then they break up because he's like i like you better we didn't speak oh just no. kidding <laughs> oh but um no but she's like can, tells him she's only has six days so he's upset about that um there's some like weird reason why something to do with the moon he's like hmm okay but doesn't let him bother him just wants to enjoy this time for yeah. right now he's like whatever you're pretty <laughs> yeah um so they go out throughout they're having a grand old time he takes her to a little s- s- snazzy benefit for the republican probably candidate well he shows her his his favorite fountain he shows her his favorite fountain which is a mermaid oh, what do you know what do you know and they talk about this time that he thought he maybe saw one and she's like oh really <laughs> it was me <laughs> but she doesn't say that yet she yeah. she keeps it she keeps it locked I mean, up meanwhile, for later. there's all these little like things that keep happening that she is sort of like hiding from him that would reveal that she's a mermaid but she's able to like cover it up so at one point she takes a bath and she puts all like salt in the, the bathtub and instantly her tail so the thing with uh, oh and her name is now Madison because she like didn't have a name oh she did but she like it's a, a mermaid name yep. and it doesn't like you can't pronounce it in the alphabet so he's like okay like let's think of a new name for you and he starts throwing out all these like badass names and uh, then he just goes oh like what like what street are we on oh madison and lex and she's like madison i like madison and he's like that's not a name and she's like well i like it best so like that's what the name's gonna be does it it say in the trivia that this started yeah. the madison trend really yeah wow yeah it's like peter pan and wendy but not they, that ended up being false um Wait, what that like there weren't people named wendy before peter oh. pan came out but i guess somebody proved that to be incorrect oh boo yeah i like to say that why there are 25,000 strippers named Madison is because of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Or regular people. Makes I don't mean to be. Makes if your name sense. is Madison, I'm sorry for many reasons. But um, meanwhile, yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, Eugene Levy's character, forget his name still, something funny. Um, Blumenthal Chapopsky. I'll say something different every time. <laughs> follow along. Like Try to follow along. Um, he sees in the tabloids that a naked, beautiful woman was spotted at Statue of Liberty. He looks at her and is like, hey, that's the mermaid I saw in the water. Um, good for him for, for realizing that. I guess it makes sense if she's naked, you kind of draw that conclusion more easily. But I just feel like if I saw somebody in the water, I would have been so surprised. That I don't know if I would have had a facial recognition moment. I don't know. Hmm. Anyways, 
So good story. He knows that she's in New York, so he goes on a quest, and I'll, I'll title this Eugene Levy's Horn quest blue. to Horn get blue. to get her wet. Ew. Ew. That's what they I mean. That's basically his life goal is to get her wet, like actually wet, because then she'll turn into a mermaid. Because he knows when she's dry, the tail goes away. But when you get wet, mermaid comes out. Right. I mean, is that a gross double entendre? <laughs> this is a family film and podcast. No, it's not. We have an explicit rating next yeah. to the thing. Um, anyway, so he tries various ways to do that, but keeps soaking the wrong person. Oops. I mean, like, take a second and look, Eugene, before you fire, right? God. Bluth. His name is Cornbluth. What's his, f- I want his first name. Oh. Walter. Walter Cornbluth. Walter. Confusing, because that was Tom Hanks' name in Money Pit. Mm. I was confused. Um, anyways, so finally, though, one night, he gets lucky. They go to a presidential benefit for somebody, a candidate, and um, they think he's going to assassinate the president. So they get they arrest Walter and then Tom Hanks. Oh, no. And then Madison's like, I'm ready to tell you my secret. And they leave. And then he sees her. And like the stupid Secret Service people left his like water canister there. I mean, it could have been a weapon. How do they know it was just a water canister? I feel like they should have taken care of that. I thought it was just a hose on the sidewalk. No, it was his little thing that he brought with him. And they, the guy like put it down next to him. So dumb. Anyway, so he picks that up, squirts her. She turns into a mermaid. She's freaking out. Everybody's freaking out, taking pictures, trying to ask her questions. And <laughs> I assume the Secret Service, like, get on the thing. They're like, something weird. Send the car. Like, this car just comes out of nowhere in two seconds. And they pulls up and throws her in there. Like, yeah. what do you think the code was to get that? Like, Wait, and did you talk about the part before, though, that they go ice skating and Tom Hanks basically proposes and she freaks out? No, because it's like, mm, I mean... <laughs> You just forgot it. Is didn't that you? crucial to yes, the understanding the movie? She almost leaves and is like, later, dude. And then they basically decide to get oh, right. married before because this. If she doesn't leave within six days, she can never go back. So, yeah, he proposes marriage. And then she's like, oh, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. So the plan was, I think she was going to stay. Right. Yeah. But now the government has her. So they bring her to a research facility, put her in this teeny tiny tank, put it. Um, Alan in a tank. Fine. He's not a mermaid. They ditch him. And then they study her, but terribly. Yeah. But, and you also left out the part that when she. Oh my God. Just Why don't you just do the synopsis? I'm trying to speed it up. Pops. We don't need to speed it up. We're only at 26 minutes. So. You're only at 26 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so. When she's getting, you know, she's kind of like. She, it's revealed that she is a mermaid and she's obviously in like terrible distress. And I'll talk about this later. It was like very upsetting to me, seen to me as a child. Uh, Tom Hanks, Alan is like, well, I'm out of here and fucking <laughs> leaves her by herself to get carted away by the feds in some truck. Yeah, but what was he going to do? Like pick her up on his own and carry her away? They needed two guys to lift her up. So, I mean, I just, he, they wouldn't have gotten what? very far. She is a toothpick. Well, why do they need two people? I don't know. Um, he could have done it. And first of all, well, you've been like, and, she's with me. I mean, she's my fiance. <laughs> and But I mean, regardless, they studied him either yeah. way. I mean, so they he got him gotten, anyway. But he would have gotten nabbed. Seriously. Bad boyfriend alert. Yeah. Alan. Sign number one. Sign number two, they try to put them together for um, interaction. And she like goes to try to like go to him. And he revol- is like revolted and makes a disgusted face like she's a disgusting piece of garbage and it's just very upsetting as sweetie said it what it was the worst you'd ever seen it was the worst i've ever seen tom hanks i was like who are you you know tom hanks never plays bad like bad people like uh road to perdition he's like a gangster who kills people that's probably like as close as he's got but he has a secret bad. heart yeah so but, it doesn't count but he's a good bad guy in that right Okay, he is was a really horrible person for a good 15 minutes of this movie. And that was enough for me to be upset for the rest of my life. It's just so sad. It's like not even, she's not gross. Like she's prettier as a mermaid. He said, whatever is your secret. Right. And listed a yeah. bunch of things. He lied. And he would not care. Bullshit. But for some reason, being a mermaid does not qualify. <laughs> oh, forget it. Mermaids it's over the top. are hot. I know, so hot. It's not like she has a disgusting, like five feet, um, like gross. Yeah. It's not like slimy uh, thing like in Shrek, where like she turns into a Shrek a thing. fat ogre. Yeah. yeah. 
No offense, <laughs> bad ogres. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Um, Wait, was she an ogre? And the trick was she turned into a princess in that movie. Yes, it was yeah, reversed. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler, Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> warning, warning. Uh, <laughs> I really have like never seen that all the way through. Oh no! Oh, no. Weekend project. <laughs> all Anyways, five ways. So, so Alan goes back home. He's depressed. <laughs> He decides that he realizes he was an asshole and that she's like the love of his life or whatever. So he goes to find Eugene Levy, I mean Walter, at the dentist. And he's like, listen, you ruined my life. And Walter's like, I know, I'm sorry. I did a bad thing. I ruined everyone's life. I didn't think about that. I'm like, really? You didn't think about that? Walt, old buddy, old pal. So he tells him that they can break her out and rescue her. So they hatch this plan that's pretty basic. Um, They pretend to be Swedish scientists. And get her out. And then they pretend that the mermaid like bites somebody's head off and they have to carry the other guy out in a body bag. But it's really her the whole time. So she's with them. They escape. Um, they get to the dock. They He's like, you have to go, Madison, because the government's closing in on him. They're closing in. Coast Guard, Army, Marines. I think it was probably everybody. Everybody came together in this one. It was like yeah, it, historical. It was, it, was it was a historical moment. Um, but she jumps off the dock and then she's gone and she's like, wave. She's like, bye, see ya. Bye, and then, it's been real. And then Alan's like, wait. And then he jumps in and all the army guys go in after him. She saves him. Apparently a mermaid can turn a human being into not necessarily a mermaid, but somebody that can breathe under, underwater. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of these these mermaid Again. rules that I feel like they're just pulling out of thin air. Right. Well, mermaid magic. It's that little bag. Yeah. You just pull it out, and you're like, I need a plot development. I need like to move the story along. Yeah. Mermaid it just magic. seems like these are convenient things that they're making a mermaid do. Uh, just, just my guess. So, yeah. So, Walter's... Not Walter. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Alan is like, fuck it. I hate it here anyway. I'll miss my brother, but m- maybe nothing else. <laughs> uh, later, I'm going to be a merman. And then they live happily ever after. Under the sea. And they go to her mermaid town village, mm-hmm. which apparently no one yeah. has discovered yet. St- stay for the credits, folks, because <laughs> you will then see what appears to be a mermaid town. You know what it looks like? It looks like episode one. Mm. Jabba, Jabba, um, Jar Jar Binks's village. That's what it looks like. Um, I would love to see that mermaid yeah. village, but I know the budget wasn't there, etc. Right. Um, just tell, like, oh, let's still just, like, really cool this concept. Light bright in here. I'm just so happy that she's not alone in the world. I thought this whole time until I saw those ending credits that she was just a lonesome single gal mermaid yeah. out on her own in the world with no companions. Well, she doesn't even have a fish friend like Ariel. Yeah. She's got nobody. She nobody. I mean, it made sense because you're like, why would you go back? Because it seems like, right? You know, kind of. Would boring. you go back to? Yeah. yeah just seemed boring you know she's like the pirate ship to play in and like saving random you know look at her maps again sailors. <laughs> i mean is that a life no. is that really a life but now this changes the it just changes everything yeah. so yeah we've changed our mind so now they're gonna be like a mermaid couple and live happily ever after and apparently they can come back because there is a sequel from 1989 starring amy yazbeck from wings also robin hood men in tights men made Mary. oh did not realize that was her name. Yep. Um, and then some dude who like doesn't even have a picture in IMDb. So like, who the fuck is that? It was a TV movie. It's called Splash Two T Double O O. Um. Yep. With this, and they they play the same characters. What's oh, and they have the same last name now. So they got married. Under the sea. Is I don't that know. legal? Let me read. What's the, the plot? Let me read the plot. <clears throat> Four years ago, a man and a mermaid swam away with your heart. Look who's back making waves. Okay, that's not. <laughs> that's, the ta- that's what's on the poster. <laughs> You're right. I, I, clicked on, I clicked on taglines. You're right. Okay. <laughs> I was so mad. Was real I was so easy mad at, I was so mad at IMDb. Talk about I was a sweetie like, synopsis. They let this go on to the plot <laughs> Okay. Actual plot summary. <laughs> A sequel to the popular romantic mermaid drama, which starred Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks, Alan becomes bored on the deserted I- island on which he and Madison are currently living, and using a special power, Madison shows him exactly what's going on in his brother Freddie's life. Through this, the couple realize that Alan's business is in trouble. Oh no, not the produce not the company fruit business! <laughs> no. 
<laughs> and return to New York, maybe contradicting the original. But Madison will only go as long as I can soak my legs in salty water at the full moon. <laughs> that's quotes around it. So I assume that's a line from the movie. Um, while there, they move into a new home, which has a pool in the backyard, exclamation point, And Madison meets a new friend. <laughs> okay, the this Fern is horrible. Hooten. <laughs> <laughs> Fern Hooten, who might and may not know her secret. Oh, wow. Tension. We are never told. Oh, damn. (laughs) While there, Madison sets herself a goal to save her dolphin friend. (laughs) What What dolphin friend? Salty. (laughs) Dolphin friend. Salty is in captivity. And while saving the business and the dolphin, she and Alan grow closer and rekindle their love. Wow. Oh, man. That is amazing. That is so great. That is a really good plot. <laughs> Salty. Wow. I hope he, I hope he makes it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's weird. So I guess, uh, yeah, you can come out of the water and live on a deserted island. Um, I just don't understand why the you can never come back thing. It seems it seems silly. Why? It seems pretty silly. I you mean, know what it and I like the thing, like maybe you can well, only come back during a certain phase of the moon. I think that is nice. Yeah, that mean that makes sense. But like, it's like in the Little Mermaid, like she can never go back because I guess you can't have like best of both worlds. But it seemed like the Madison's whole life was best of both worlds because, as we said in the beginning, like I don't think that's how mermaids work. That like when your t- your legs, your tail are dry, they're legs, but when they're not, they're fins. Right. I don't know who started who started that myth. Probably Eugene Levy, but. Um, I wonder, I kept thinking, because they kept talking about, like, the cycles of the moon. I was like, it's a period thing where, like, mm. <laughs> it's like, you can never be a child again or you have to, like, leave that all behind and grow up or something. Yeah. Like, like some bullshit, like, side plot of The Little Mermaid is, like, when you're old, you, like, can't see your dad ever again. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, that used to happen with, like, old marriages. You'd be like, no. later. Um, <laughs> yeah, but anyway interesting movie um it like flew by i feel like it lasted for like a second Mm. it's like an hour and it's 111 minutes so it's not like so it's almost two hours yeah i don't remember how much there was prior to when they first make their actual acquaint like yeah when they first meet each other for the first time there's so much that happens before that that i didn't realize there's this whole i mean just all the fruit, the produce business mm. stuff, like all the warehouse stuff. One of the other guys gets married. Um, the John Candy character is just like such a ladies' man, and you're like, why is he a ladies' man? Yes, <laughs> I was just very confused by that. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I just yeah, but sweet movie. Um, yeah, it's sweet. I'm it's sweet. A little, like I don't know. I'm not. I still have plots that are like. They don't know each other, and then they are like <laughs> together forever. You're so dubious. I, just let I, love happen. I don't. Let I can't love let love happen. In. I just do not believe it. I think you need to take time and get to know. They somebody. have some kind of attraction to each other. I mean, yes. I think that this, in this case, is like a historical, like meant to be. She saved him when he was six or whatever. It's so they like were in meant the shape to of find water. each other. So as luck would have it, this movie is eerily similar to The Shape of Water, um, for that reason alone. Right? They like meet each other for a second and they're in love just like the shape of water yeah um it's a quick thing when you see a fish it's either you love them or you don't i think is the general gist there um but so i will say that this mermaid tale is so realistic <laughs> what don't you oh, feel that physical yeah T-A-I-L. You, I always, <laughs> yeah I thought she meant this mermaid tail, oh. T-A-L-E. No, no, no. You're right. That could be confusing. But no, I always, like, even when I was little, I was Have like, this is it? such a convincing tale. It's right. It's like fish. It's just fishy enough. Like, it's not like fake mermaid. Oh, you're just talking about the tail. Sorry. Can you get with it? Yes, I'm talking about the tail. God. And I like no, the color. It's crazy. It's pretty. Well, I was going to ask you. I don't know how I feel about an orange mermaid tail. I think it's cool. I like blue or green. Orange just seems like is not natural to the sea. Yes, it is. There's orange fish all over the place. It's like that fish. So she's like a goldfish fish mermaid color. I don't know. It I'm, is a really realistic tale. Yeah. That okay. The part that like creeps me out, but also is really cool to me, 
is that part where she's in the bathtub and like the, mm. the end part like un- yes. unfolds, unfolds like over the tub. I love that. <gasps> I love that. Oh, it's, it's so, so crazy. Cool. Yeah. And they do. And even like, what is that part where she's all of a sudden like she's her legs are crossed, but then it just she's on the bathtub too. Right. And it just like appears as scales. Oh, yeah. That's creepy. It was kind of creepy. I didn't, yeah. I didn't remember that. I was like, whoa, weird effect. Um, but yeah, I love I love that tail. I like the color. You don't, but whatever. Um, what was I talking about before that? Why did I start talking no about shell the boobs. Tail? No shell boobs. Because really, who cares? You're a mermaid down in there. I mean, I guess all the other mermaid people don't have bras either. It's just Disney who didn't Disney invented need them. boobs. Yeah. So they're like, and her hair's long enough that you never actually see her. I mean, her breasts. That's so. the deal with mer- that's why it's mermaid hair because yeah. it's long. You have to cover your boobs up. Right. Um, yeah. Um, what else? Convenient. Oh, um, I just want to point out that she's so brave. Um, I am afraid to go into like a sandwich shop that I've never been in before, but she's just like, yeah, I'll go to Bloomingdale's and just like waltzes in, not afraid of New York City, not afraid of any of these humans and like life. Yeah. Like she seems well, to just adapt very quickly. What I feel that Madison is in the beginning, the first day, let's say, or two that she's on land. Mm-hmm. She's very childlike, right? So, like, initially she can't speak. She has to be told what everything is. She's wowed by what we call ordinary things, like revolving doors or televisions or, like, anything. Um, And she's very childlike in that sense. So I think that also comes with, like, incredible bravery and, like, no inhibitions or anything like Mm -hmm. that because she does have this, like, childlike wonder about this, like, new world, right? But then it only takes her like two days before she like has to deal with all like that human bullshit. And she's like, hell no, this place stinks. Like what? (laughs) Well, she like has to deal with like all this relationship with Alan and like all that stuff and like having to deal with that part of it. Um, Does she have any other like bad things? Mm. Really? Well, I mean, New York's kind of crazy, but she still finds it like really cool. She loves it. Um, You know, people thinking she's strange. That kind of a thing. I don't think she cares about that either. Well, here's my question. What's the bathroom situation like? Because, <laughs> like, how do fish go to the bathroom? They have, like, a little hole. Right. So when she becomes a person, she all of a sudden has to do it out different ways? Does she know what to do? Like, that's what I'm saying about the, like, she adapts quickly. Like, she knows how to, like, make moves on someone and have sex with. Like, she knows how to have sex, even though she, up until, like, recently didn't have a vagina. Well, maybe she has one. Well, she obviously Where? has one. Yeah, but she's never like seen it or used it, probably. Yeah, but she's she's able to have legs. Who knows what her past relationships are? You don't know. Are you saying she's a mermaid floozy? Yes. <laughs> she, she goes above be? the water every month and finds a new man to do. I mean, you don't know her sexual past. <sighs> wow, that changes. Everything. She has probably had some mermaid boyfriends as well. Who knows what the deal is with that? Yeah, how do they have sex? I have so yeah. many questions. I don't know. I mean, I'm that's sure. just one of my. Many I mean, questions. let's remember in Shape of Water, didn't look like he had anything. Right. And it was like a little. It was this hidden garage door. Mm-hmm. Just like yep. beep. Yep. Um, spoiler again. Um, <laughs> mermaid penis. Um, I mean, okay, wait, what were the other questions I had? Does she have a family? We answered that from the end credits. Thank God. Um, yeah, how does she know what to do? Vag question mark. Talked about that. Um, that's it. I thought I had more. I guess I didn't write them down. Mm. What do you got? <laughs> um, I, all of my questions have been asked. What I have remaining are memorable scenes. Okay. Stuff that stood out to me. Uh-huh. Um, and my own personal feelings about a cert- certain scenes. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's start with... Memorable scenes. Okay. So the first one I remember as a child is definitely the first one when he she gets rest she rescues him when she's a little girl. Because you see like baby mermaid, which is really cute. Baby mermaid. So she's a little girl, she has her little necklace on, she like saves him really sweet. Um I have to say, as someone who is afraid of shark movies and sharks, um, any movie that has water, I always like tense up a little bit because I'm like, is there gonna be a giant keeping shark bath? Man, you're you're so strange. It's just that 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 shot where you know, like you, when you like always know when somebody's gonna come out of the water, right? 
just from behind. Like you, the camera's uh, behind them and you see their head. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the way that the, the shot is framed that is just because it does it so that you can see just enough of the top but then like or whatever that's called and then the, the foreground. So I just knew and I was like, oh, shark. But anyways, yeah, I just had a little PTSD. That's all. I just want to talk about that. Um, but yeah, so that scene, you remember? Um, yep, so that one. And then the TV breaking scene. So like we said, like she can't pronounce her name so he's like well just say it in your language and her language is basically like dolphin sounds which is so high pitched and probably at like a frequency that humans like aren't even able to hear uh she breaks all the tvs in the tv department that was like a super famous scene i mean who had to pay for those yeah anyone no i think they probably just left uh the lobster eating scene probably the most famous so he takes her to a fancy restaurant Everyone's getting lobster in that restaurant. Wow. It might just be a it lobster, might be a lobster restaurant. place. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. I don't know. That's, I don't, that's not So a uh, brings the lobster out and she immediately starts mowing on the lobster, like eating it through the shell. And everyone's like, oh, oh, like staring. Like, what is that woman doing? Yeah. And he's and like, again, she's really hungry. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you eat a lobster raw, in underwater would the shell be softer right yeah because you cook it and it gets hard yeah harder i assume i don't know i don't know i just i'd expect her to be like whoa i cooked lobster yeah, this is right. different yeah this is more crunchier than i remember right because they don't but have to she cook just, it she doesn't care fun fact about that little scene so daryl hannah is a uh, very avid vegetarian and refused to eat any real lobster or anything like that so they took lobster shells and uh, filled it with a tofu-like substance so she could eat it. But she still had a bite into the lobster shell? Yeah, I guess so. So she got, like, sick and got so upset after every time they filmed that scene. So that's a, that's sad. Yikes. That so, method acting. Poor Daryl. Brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's sad. No, method acting would be, like, if she ate a real lobster. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> like you like Michelle Pfeiffer putting a real bird in her mouth. Right. She's like, yeah, I'm it's, here. It's so method. Um, yep, and then... Then, um, I think those are the three scenes that I really remember. Mm. Oh, and then my two traumatic ones, yeah. though, right. are when she gets revealed as being a mermaid. So traumatic. And it, it feels like a very, I felt very violated I in that so, scene. I felt so violated. And I felt very uncomfortable because she's freaking out. Nobody will help her. And again, this is why I'm like so pissed at the Alan character. Because he's like, whoop. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Yeah. And like walks away. I mean, that is terrifying. Like cameras in her face, people, some randos putting her like on a, into a van. She doesn't know. I mean, come awful. On. So it just awful. felt almost like yeah. rapey or it's, something. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Super rapey. Yeah. yeah. It's not Ugh. like it. And then I basically had like an ET, like sick ET experience when she's in the, in the water and that like tiny, tiny little tank and her freaking Finn is like peeling off her skin it's too. So gross. Her skin's flaky yes. too. Yes, flaky too. So you it's know, disgusting. And she's all like, she's super pale and has like big bags on her yeah. eyes. She looks real sick. It's it's just like you know, uh, free Willy with that 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 fin going down like that. Don't keep marine animals in tiny cages. You know, we don't need to look at them. At least give her a little more room. She has nowhere to go. I just I don't I don't feel good about any like marine kind of stuff. I just feel weird about like it. Marine studying? No, I think anything when you're like putting someone who is used to an entire ocean to swim in into like such a small space. So sweetie's not for Sea World. No. And Loud honestly, and after I watched what was that? Blackfish? No. You didn't watch that. Yeah, I did. You did? Mm -hmm. With me? Yeah. No. Pretty sure. I only saw it one time. It was by myself. Then I wanted you to watch it, it by but myself. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I just don't. And like, I almost feel like that way about zoos too. Because now we're at a point where like, you can see anything you want with the internet and pictures and stuff. I don't know. Do we need it's zoos? It's not the same. Do we need no, zoos? No, we don't need zoos. We need like safaris that people can go out and animals can just, be, and then we can just like graze on the on the sidelines, like look at them and be like, ooh, an elephant. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I would like to talk about the things that are especially 80s in this movie. So, number one, um, eating disorder jokes. Again, such a big thing in the 80s. They just did not take that seriously, I guess. I don't know why. That's because Luke is talking, had one too, yeah. remember? And it's just such a weird thing. It's just like, oh, shit, it's an eating disorder. Ha, ha, ha. Like, it's weird, right? It's weird. Yeah. Um, and then second to that, mental illness jokes. Mental illness, yeah. 
which so this old lady secretary at the produce company got in an accent accident or something to me it seems like she's developing um alzheimer's or um dementia dementia well she was struck by lightning though oh okay that was a real accident <laughs> uh, oh i thought he just made that up to be funny but they were sort of like making fun of a kind of baddie like old lady right where i was like she needs serious medical attention yeah. and they were just like they're like she can still it. do some jobs yeah yeah that totally was weird. weird um we already talked about this with the, the weird commercial slash awkward fashion show such mm-hmm. an 80s commercial right where it's just like no thought put into it just pretty women walking up and down being pretty and that's Clyde. that's your ad Bloody nails. <laughs> and then the last one racquetball oh, racquetball so yeah racquetball was huge does anyone in the know 80s. does anyone still play racquetball now i was gonna ask you that because <laughs> our like one gym we had in our, our town growing up had a big racquetball court that was last time i played um, racquetball right <laughs> and then we go there for gym class if we went to the charter school can i tell you a story there. about that yes did i tell that when we when we did the racquetball scene in big no well i guess that was that was handball yeah that, that was different handball. so like sweetie said we had to go to this like gym for our gym classes in this charter school we went to because we didn't have a gymnasium so they like took us to a like actual gym where you work out or uh, what is that called a club mm-hmm. an athletic club. club yeah oh. you know that has like a pool and like weight rooms and racquetball courts and like all that stuff so racquetball was like one of like the i don't know if it was like a unit or like we played it for like a week or something i don't know and they're like, okay, does anyone wear like contacts or anything? And I'm like, oh yeah, me. And they're like, okay, like you have to wear these like butt ugly goggles when you play racquetball. <laughs> and they were for like old men and they kept falling off my face. And I was like, what the fuck? But everybody has to wear those. No, it was but only when because you see it now, right? They, everyone's wearing the glasses. But why? I don't know. If but, you have glasses. I don't know. But first of all, it protects like, your glasses. What about I, your eyes? <laughs> what if we get hit in the eye? I don't know, but I was the only one who had to wear it, and it was, like, Ugh. so awful. And I was like, I'm, I'm never playing this again. I was so embarrassed. I'm I was sorry. like, I should have lied. Because, like, yeah. she wouldn't have known. <laughs> you would have been blind as a bat. And I think that was because, like, contact used to be, like, glass. Oh. So if, like, <laughs> if something hit, a ball hit you in the eye, you would, like, worry about glass breaking in your eye. But a soft contact, something hits you in the eye, and that contact breaks. It doesn't do It just, like, dissolves. Your do contacts anything. are made of glass? No. The old ones used to be. Then why are they still making you wear goggles? I don't know. Maybe she but thought I had glass ones. It was such a weird thing because it was so the racquetball is like just like in this movie where it's like an enclosed glass room and you can see everything. And I just remember always walking past that room and seeing like got little like sweaty men in little shorts. It's always men in little shorts like playing racquetball yeah. because they're the ones that played it in the 80s. So now they're the ones playing it. When I was older? I don't know. Yeah. But it's it's a super 80s thing. If you watch The Americans Mm -hmm. um, on FX, there's a whole racquetball subplot. And that's Um, like, I feel like in all these movies, that's like how men like talk about How men bonded at the gym. They like, that's the only way. It's so weird. Because you're in this box. It was just you two. So you could have this like private conversation and like hit that ball back and forth. I don't know. I feel like there's even more movies where that's like a scene in. And now I can't think of them. But like, (laughs) we'll look it up. We'll oh look it up. God, racquetball. Where racquetball. you been? Miss you. Come R.I.P. back. Um, and you know, maybe men were like more healthy then. Like not only because they played racquetball, because they could like get their shit out. They were talking about stuff. Now there's no racquetball. They're not able to like <laughs> get right. stuff You're off right. their chest. We need to bring racquetball back. <laughs> Stat I solved it, guys. <laughs> Solving a lot of stuff. Yeah, you this. are. You're just so smart. It's mermaid magic. Mermaid magic. Um. Yeah. Scary hose scene. Okay, I think I got everything on mine. Um, what question for you? What do you think the title song from this movie is titled? This what song that plays at the end? It sounds yeah. it's like a Bette Midler knockoff. On the fins of love, <laughs> close. Uh, love came for me. Lo- that I mean, that's exactly what this is. You're right. Love came for him in the form of a fish. <sighs> Good one. Okay, uh, I have a couple more things. Uh, okay, again, Madison, her human wardrobe is pretty cool. I don't know if it reminds me of Barbie clothes because she looks like a Barbie or they're legit look like Barbie clothes. I mean, what that, do you think? That pink dress. Just like and the blue one, the off the shoulder up. blue one. I love the off the shoulder. Wait, the, is the it a dress or a sweater? The sweater? No, no, no. Oh, I love the sweater. I love but the, the sweater. one that, she, the dress that she wears when she turns into a mermaid when her, she gets wet. Ew. Yeah, no, they're definitely Barbie clothes. Yeah. Like, but like 80s Barbie clothes. Little ankle boots with like the fringe on it. I love her outfit. The big sweater with that, the belt. That old lady that helped her at Bloomingdale's. 
Amazing. I want her number. Amazing. I want her card. She, yeah, she's a great stylist. Yeah. We all and they could weren't use like her. gross dated 80 clothes. No, they were pretty cute. They were cool. Yeah. They were like JC Wyatt yes. 80s clothes. Yes. Baby boom. If you know. Um, but yeah, I love those clothes. I love that little pink dress with like the matching yeah. pink shawl. Yeah. That. That's my yeah, favorite. She looks so good in that. Hands down. Hands down. I know. Great. Great bod. Good. Lots of shots of uh, her buttocks. So many. And they, I mean, they didn't show her boobs or anything, obviously, like very like PG movie. Um, though, I mean, definitely some like sexual th- themes. Uh, yeah. She like rapes him basically in yeah. the police, the uh, police station. Oh, yeah. Um, and again, great role for John Candy, I thought. I thought he was hilarious and he made. So in the beginning, John Candy is basically like rolls in with his like Corvette and he's dressed like Hugh Hefner and he has like all these issues of Penthouse or Playboy. Penthouse? No, it's Penthouse. Penthouse because he wrote like a dirty story and it made it in there. So he's like all excited. So him and Alan like own the business. They took it over from their dad, but he's like not really involved. So he's like trying to get more involved. But he's basically just like, he just drinks all the time and smokes. They're playing racquetball and he like has to have a beer when they're playing and, and he's smoking and like, yeah. So he's like basically a hot mess. But then at the end when, um, Alan is like, Oh, like she's a mermaid. Like I'm always so unlucky this and that, like this could never happen. And he's like, basically convince him that like, you know, you will get like that kind of love like every day. Like not most people, like you have to go find her. And he like convinces her to go back and get her. And I just thought that was a great change from how he was like this playboy boozer and becomes the voice of reason. I did like that. I did like how he showed up and saved him. Yeah. And he was um, hilarious as John was. Candy always is. So classic. I yeah. I freaking love yeah. him. Yeah. I agree. I agree. What else? Um, I mean, how realistic is this mermaid life for Alan? Just kidding. I guess it's fine because there's a mermaid <laughs> land. <laughs> yep. These are my actual this is notes. exactly what happened. <laughs> We were, I was shocked. I was shocked. Simply shocked. Um, side note, have you ever seen a penthouse magazine? Uh, no. Ugh, it's disgusting. It's so gross. It's like full crotch shots. Like what? They just like sit in chairs and like open their legs. <gasps> it's disgusting. I went to the penthouse strip club in New Orleans. What? So in New Orleans on Bourbon Street, every like, so penthouse, playboy, and hustler like all have like a strip house, strip club, <laughs> strip house. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> It's a larger strip club. We're going to call it um, that now. A strip house. And so we like met these guys who are in a, bach- a bachelor party on the street. And they're like, hey, we're going into, um, you know, this club. Like, come with us. So the, we, they paid for us and we went in. Oh, my God. Have you ever been in a strip club? No. It's like the saddest experience of your life. <laughs> it's just like basically like a normal bar, but there's just naked chicks, like motorboating dudes everywhere. Um, and the worst part is they look so bored <laughs> like in flash dance yeah yes like, to <laughs> whatever like, that song is and like you know what they're making my friends like don't worry like they're making so much money like you shouldn't feel that bad for them but i do yeah i mean those i mean those ones are gross those, those. these were like nice ones though. oh yeah hmm. these were like the more like high level ones and it just seemed like weird that like i mean the guys weren't really even like looking at them because we were like they brought us there so they were like talking to us and we were just kind of like flirting with them or whatever and it's like, do you need this? Like, you have, like, real women talking to you. Like, not that those women aren't real, but it was just like, anyway, why don't we talk about this? Oh, Penthouse. penthouse. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so it was the Penthouse Strip Club. Girls. Yeah. yeah. Penthouse is just, like, too much. It's like showgirls. It's just, like, teens tone it down. Yeah. Like, it, there's too much. Not tasteful. Too much sex. <laughs> Gross. Yucks. Anyways. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so, yeah. We saw The Shape of Water. Again, this movie has a lot of similarities to it. To the point where I think that um, gr- how do you say it? Guillermo. Guillermo. Um, basically stole everything from Splash. I mean, I'm just going to say it. there's a shot towards the end of the movie that's like mirror image of a scene in The Shape of Water. Um, the whole, I mean, just the idea of a human falling in love with an amphibious creature yeah. of some kind. Non-human. Um, the salt in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah. The flaky skin when he like mm, needs to go yeah. back. Just There's a lot of similarities. But maybe that's just the mermaid myth in lore. Yeah. Although I will say that. So I'll, while I don't know. I mean, I'd love to do more research into mermaids. And I'm sure those of you that do know a lot about mermaids can chime in on Twitter and tell us what we need to know. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that we have like beautified mermaids, right? They're like they're beautiful women, long hair, beautiful, topless, blah, blah, blah. But in things like Harry Potter, you have mermaid species that are just very 
more fish like and right. are, are like mermaid scales all the way not pretty more yeah. scary and evil and i think well, that's more what they were actually supposed to be well let's remember like where the myth of the mermaid came from right so you were talking about sailors who were away with no women contact no women on ships right for months at a time so i think it was partially like fantasy for them to be like you know you know almost like sirens and like envisioning these mm-hmm. beautiful women but what I think has been the stories with with sailors, it has been that they saw um, animals like manatees that looked like people with like fins, and they would like see that from far away and be convinced there were like these mer people mm. in where they were true. sailing. True, true. So I think that's where like the the myth of the mermaid actually comes about. Um, oh, like you're old, so smart. You're man. like really smart. Well, I just remember from like remember that museum we had on Cape Cod, the one in the National Seashore, with like all the like sailor stuff. I think they had like a the sands of time. That. No, no. So like the the museum in the back that had like all the artifacts from like old oh, sailing stuff. So remember they of, had yeah. those like sailor valentines made up of the shells and like they talked about like widows they, walks oh, where yeah, like yeah, widows yeah, yeah. would make the, you know walk around those big depths, depths. basically like roof decks yeah. waiting for their husbands to come home. I mean, there's a lot of good the, this the seafaring legends are very interesting. It I mean, is that's like a whole another world unto its own out there, right? Um, we okay. just that book we just read for book club is so much like nautical stuff, and it made me think. Of oh that yeah, too. yeah, totes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we recommend Shape of Water. Yep, very beautiful film. Um, very interesting. If you've ever seen Guillermo del Toro, other films, um, Pan's Labyrinth. He's done Hellboy, Hellboy, The Devil's Backbone. Yeah, D- um, Crimson Peak. Crimson. Oh, he did Crimson Pink. So he does, as Sweetie said here, reminded me after we came out of that movie, very like realistic kind of, what is that when you're like kind of grossed out violence, like squirmy. Well, gore. No, it's like realistic gore. Yeah. It's usually, yeah, just like somebody like threading a needle through their face yeah. for stitches and like not, the camera doesn't shy away. Um, so there's scenes like that. So if you're squeamish about that stuff, there's a yeah, few Yeah, squeamish. Few if you're like, scenes. definitely squeamishy kind of stuff. But yeah, really beautiful film. I thought really well done. Oh, and um, spoiler, traumatic cat scene. Yeah. Um, I cried a little bit. Yeah, could be a trigger, really trigger point for, for people with cats. So. Especially if your cat fell off Watch the balcony and lost a leg. So it's just... <laughs> Just a warning. Man, you got a lot of triggers now. I'm <laughs> no, really worried about I know. you. I'm like Vomit, minefield. Sharks. Uh, cat deaths. Uh, Jeez. Jeez. Cat impalement. Uh, when I came home, I hugged Desmond for like an hour. I was like, yeah, I'm so I knew. As soon as that scene was happening, I was like, oh God, Andre's going to be a hot mess. I'm going to have to give her more of my M&Ms. Oh, they were my M&Ms. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah. Anyways, good flick. Splash. Good flick. Um, very... I liked all the mermaid parts a lot. Mm. Wish there were more of them. Love almost. it. Yeah, true. You're right. I loved her under the sea. Again, the budget, really probably happy. the budget, probably yeah. a budget issue. Yeah. Um, but really great, really convincing work there. Um, yeah, that was kind of awesome. Yeah. I mean, because they just, it was legit. They just put a tail on her. I mean, they didn't like use any CGI or anything like fancy like that. No. It was just literally Daryl Hannah like swimming around with a giant tail. So Amazing. That's all I ever, Props like, to you. Yeah, when we were little, we would go to our grandparents' um, place in Florida for a school vacation in Naples and they had a pool and I would just spend all day in that fucking pool swimming around it like a mermaid with my with my feet like together and being like okay two laps around the pool means I'm going to my friend like my mermaid friend's house and then like three laps is like <laughs> what was over the, here the, the mermaid store channel mermaid oh show that you love ocean girl yeah. <sighs> best show ever my mom and i were obsessed with it oh mom we would yeah i i think you can watch it on youtube i want to watch an episode yeah um but it's the f- best show but she wasn't a mer- i mean she had legs the whole time even oh. when she was in the water for oh. just some reason she could breathe underwater oh, okay. um but i forget the logistics were there, there any mer- actual mermaids in it though no no it was just her i forget where she came from but they had, remember they had like the necklaces and stuff right what did that do yeah. that made no, them breathe they, underwater oh is that it are you sure they didn't get tails i don't know pretty sure i'll look i'll do a quick image search just to double check but yeah she was just like an island girl she looked like a yeah she was just like this oh yeah no but no 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 there's one what is the australian one with the mermaids so this is this like oh you're talking about a whole totally different one yeah the one that that? austin yes um aquamarine 
No. 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 Shoot. Well, Australian <laughs> Mermaid Show is called. Something Girls? Uh, Mako Mermaids? No. Uh, <laughs> timeline? What, no. what are oh all God. these things? H2O? Yeah. That, what's that? H2O. Just yeah. add water? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Uh, the Mermaid Show. Um, but yeah, I love mermaids so much. So much, you guys. So much. Um, anything else before we wrap it up? No, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, come find us on Twitter at The Sweetie Club or on Instagram at Large Marge Sent Us. Thank you, as always, for listening. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.